Hello, brothers and sisters. I hope you're doing well. I got a prophetic dream from the Lord that I want to share with you guys. It's very, very important to know what's coming. We are in the last days. There's a lot of false prophets speaking false things. But we have to be aware of what's really coming. So here's the dream. I'm going to share it in three parts. I'm going to share most of it. The first part of the dream, the Lord spoke to me through a gathering of prophets true prophets of God, not the false prophets that are prophesying lies, but true prophets of God. And the Lord spoke to me and he said, love God, love people. And that this had to be the absolute focus of my life. And I began to walk down a street and I was repeating, love God, love people, love God, love people. Focus, focus, focus on this one thing. Then someone called out to me and offered, said, will you come eat with me? And I thought, oh, it'd be nice to get some food. But then I remembered the call of God, love God, love people, stay on the road, stay focused, don't get distracted. And so I did and I continued on. That was the first part of the dream. The second part of the dream, I was seated in a circle of chairs and across from me was a true prophet of God. And he was speaking to me things that are going to come. He was very, very serious, very, very solemn. And he told me that the things that are going to come on the earth are going to happen faster than I thought originally. The things that are going to happen are going to happen sooner than I thought. The things that are coming are going to happen sooner than I thought. And he had my attention and he told me that the markets were going to crash. The markets were going to crash and that I would not be able to buy or sell. And of course, by that, I understood that he was talking about not just me, but many, many people that we would not be able to buy or sell. So this is what he said. He said in a very serious tone, I'm afraid I have really bad news. All this stuff is going to happen sooner than you thought. You won't be able to buy or sell. The markets are going to crash. They're going to get your financial statements. They're going to get your financial statements and the markets are going to crash. That people would not be able to buy and sell. It's going to be a horrible market crash um, and people would not be able to buy and sell. And of course, at the time, I didn't understand fully what that meant. But as I woke up and I was seeking the Lord, then he revealed to me what that meant, that there is going to be a huge market crash. It's going to be extremely difficult to buy and sell because of the cost of items, but also because of the mandates coming out that if you don't get the pinch, you know what I'm talking about, that you won't be able to go to the store and buy and sell. And all of that, though the pinch itself is not the mark of the beast spoken of in Revelation, clearly because it does not fit prophecy, it is preparation for the coming mark of the beast that will be used to identify you. It'll go into your hand or your forehead and it'll be used by the Antichrist, by the beast, by the false prophet. And of course the Bible says if you get that, that you will go to hell. So resist that at all costs. And I do not recommend at all getting the pinch because that is preparation for the mark of the beast and it is extremely dangerous. Many people have died and many people will continue to die in the next three or so years because of that. So I give a warning, please don't. But back to the dream. So in the dream, in the second part, like I said, he warned that there would be these things coming on the earth much faster, sooner than I thought. And I thought it would be years from now. Um, so I assume it's going to happen very soon, market crash. And it says the markets crash. He was plural when he spoke that to me. So I believe it's going to be different markets all across the world, including America, though he didn't say that in the dream. I believe it for sure that there will be a giant market crash in America and across the world. And he gave me practical things to prepare that I'll share later. So after the prophet said, all these things are going to happen sooner than you think, you won't be able to buy and sell, the markets are going to crash. Um, he also said something very interesting. He said that they would be able to get your financial statements, your financial statements. So I don't know fully what that means, but I assume it means that the government is going to be able to have control and be able to get into people's finances. I forgot to mention earlier that when I was seated around that circle and that true prophet of God was in front of me, across from me. There was a woman next to me, but there were many empty seats 
in that oval or in that circle. And recently, God began to show me what those empty seats actually meant, that those empty seats are symbolic of leaders, of people that should be seated there, leaders that should be seated there to hear what God has to say in this hour, but they weren't at their post. They weren't seated. They weren't seeking God to hear what God had to say in this hour. Also, it was very interesting. Next to me, there was this man, an image of a man, and he was dressed in a suit and he was a preacher. And I kind of asked the prophet, I was like, hey, what about this guy? What's going to happen? And he told me that the judgment time for them is not yet, but it's coming and that they're going to lose everything. And when I woke up and I was seeking the Lord more on it, I understood more that that man was symbolic of the the false church system and the false church leaders that are preaching lies, that are getting rich from the false gospel that they're preaching and all these things. Then in the third part of the dream, I remember thinking, wow, I'm so glad that I have this friend of mine. And it was a person that lives nearby in a Christian community because I can fish with her and um, forage and I can teach people how to forage and things like that. And so the interpretation for that part, I believe, is that in this last days, we need to have community. We have got to have community because if you are not able to buy and sell, if disasters are hitting across the world, if power is going out in people's homes, how are you going to see online and find the the different leaders that you follow online? You need physical, actual people to come together with the true church of God that teaches the truth. You need to come together with them right now while you can and start fellowshipping together because things are going to get very, very, very bad on the earth. Very bad on the earth very soon. It's going to get worse and worse. We are in the birth pangs. So if what I'm saying is true, why is it that so many of the modern prophets are saying peace and safety, prosperity and blessing? to the church in this hour? Why is it that they are not warning the people and waking the people up to the judgments of God that are now upon the earth? The same thing happened in Jeremiah's day. Let me share with you a story. Jeremiah in the Bible was a true prophet of God and he was sent by God to warn the people. There was a time where God's people were in sin and rebellion against him and God had warned them, warned them, warned them, warned them and said, turn away from your sin. Turn away from your compromise. You're an adulterer. You are like a prostitute because his people were in sin. They weren't really following God. And Jeremiah was sent by God to tell the people of the destruction and judgments of God that were planned. And how God would judge his people specifically was by sending in the army of Babylon to take captive the people of God. This was God's judgment. Yes, he used Babylon to do it, but it was God's judgment against the lukewarm, sinful people that claimed to be his followers. In the same way, that's happening today. So Jeremiah was sent by God to warn the people about what was coming. So why didn't the people listen? It's because false prophets also arose in that time period. And they told the people, blessing, blessing, blessing. God is a good God. He's not going to bring judgments. He's not going to bring destruction. He is a good God. And don't worry about it, right? You're his people. He won't judge you. All these things, even though the people were in sin and God was pleading with them. He didn't want to judge them. He was pleading with them to repent. But because they would not, God was bringing the judgments. So Jeremiah was a prophet who pleaded with the people and said, repent, 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 turn back to God, turn from your wicked ways. But the people instead wanted to listen to false prophets who told them all is well, God is pleased with you, don't worry about it, who basically made it so that they didn't feel the urgency of the hour that they were in. They didn't realize the very urgency that destruction was right on their doorstep. And so they just decided to go about with their business. They didn't repent. They didn't cry out to God. They didn't pray and fast and seek his face. They didn't turn from their wicked ways. Instead, they continued on and were listening to the false prophets who were telling them all is well. Do you see that that's the same thing that's happening now? The church is in apostasy. The church is filled with sin. Most of the congregations, when they do surveys, show that they're addicted to pornography. The men, 
God is trying to warn his people and say destruction is right here at the door. But the false prophets are over there saying, oh no, all is well, all is well, all is well. God is trying to say, repent, turn, cry out to me, fast and pray. The false prophets are saying, oh, the victory is now. And they're not calling people to fast and pray and to get on their face. They're not waking people up to see the reality of the destruction that's about to hit them. This is Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 16. Thus says the Lord of hosts, do not listen to the words of the prophets who prophesy to you. They make you worthless. They speak a vision of their own heart, not from the mouth of the Lord. They continually say to those who despise me, the Lord has said, you shall have peace. And to everyone who walks according to the dictates of his own heart, they say, no evil shall come upon you. In verse 21, it says, I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then they would have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. God says the same thing now. He looks at the backslidden, lukewarm, compromised, worldly church of this age, and he says, I am bringing a judgment. My judgments are coming upon the earth. Repent now. Repent now. All you in America, all you in all these different countries across the earth, hear my words. The judgments of God are coming. And it's because of sin. And so the only answer is not to fight back with guns. The only answer is to get on your knees and cry out and pray to the living God. That is the only way that these disasters can be averted, postponed for a time. That's the only way. It was the only way then, and it's the only way now. So any prophets telling you, don't worry, blessing, 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 they're not telling you to fast and pray and get on your face and weep and cry out before the Lord. They're just telling you blessing, blessing, blessing. Those prophets are not from God. That's not from God. I'll tell you right here, right now, those are false prophets. So hear the true word of the Lord, and that is that these disasters are coming on the earth. Things will not get better. They're going to get worse, worse and worse and worse and worse. A huge stock market crash is coming. Famine is coming. Pestilence is coming. Disaster is coming. Worse and worse and worse. But the only way to postpone it is if God's people will start to cry out and pray and fast and seek his face. Then, who knows, God may have mercy and postpone all the disasters coming upon the earth. But if God's people do not do that, it's going to get worse and worse and worse in this hour at this time. And you in three years, in four years, are going to look back in total shock about the things that have come upon the earth. I want you guys to notice something. God's people in Jerusalem were invaded by Babylon. That was a symbol. Babylon and all of these things are symbols of the end times. Remember the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego where Babylon set up that statue, Nebuchadnezzar set up that statue and he tried to get everybody to bow down to his image. In the same way, that shows us Babylon is a picture of these end times. So how is it that God's people were brought into captivity of Babylon? That shows us how it is that people are going to be also brought into captivity leading up to the time where the Antichrist rises and tries to force everybody to take the mark of the beast and to worship his image. So what happened? Let's look at Jeremiah's day. After the people refused to listen to Jeremiah, what happened next? Soon Babylon did start to invade, but the people, instead of crying out to God, when they saw Babylon approaching, they continued to go after the dictates of their own heart. They continued to use worldly means to stop Babylon invading. They didn't listen to God when God was speaking through the prophet that Babylon was an army sent by God to bring judgment to his people. Instead, they were so focused on defeating Babylon instead of realizing that this was a judgment of God. That the only way out of it was to cry out to God, repent, pray, that he might possibly have mercy and that it might not be too late. So in the same way, that's what's happening now. The world can see Babylon, the false beast system that is invading the world that is taking control, that is clutching the world. And God's people, instead of waking up and realizing it's because of your own sin, it's because of the lukewarmness, it's because of the compromise and worldliness that God is sending these disasters, instead of crying out and repenting, they're listening to false prophets that are saying, all is well. Now, what happened next? Babylon came and surrounded Jerusalem. 
to lay siege on it. Babylon surrounded Jerusalem to lay siege on it so that people couldn't go and buy and sell and do all these things. They couldn't go get food. They, had to, they were stuck in their city, stuck in their homes. You see what I'm saying? Nowadays, what has Babylon, the modern Antichrist system of Babylon, doing to the people? They're forcing them to stay in their homes. They're putting them on lockdown, even by threat of military, forcing people to stay in their homes. Do you see the parallels? Do you see the parallels? So what happened with Jerusalem? We need to look at this and see if it has any clues of what they have planned in this day and age. Remember that Babylon is a picture of what's going to happen in the end days. So after Babylon surrounded Jerusalem, pretty soon Jerusalem ran out of food. They're not able to buy and sell normally. They're not able to go out and get food. It's like in modern terms where their market crashes and they have famine. And so the people start to have famine and they start to starve. So what happened at Babylon is pretty soon famine came. The people had no more food. In the same way, that's what's next going to happen on the earth is market crashes and famine. Then what happened? Babylon was able to weaken the people and get through and take them captive into slavery. In the same way, that's what's going to happen if God's people don't cry out to postpone it. Babylon is going to be able to, the Antichrist system is going to be able to cause massive famine and massive turmoil and market crash so that then they can invade and take the people captive into slavery. That's the devil's plan for this hour and then to force the people to take the mark of the beast. The Lord showed me practically things that would be useful, like fishing or foraging, learning how to do those things. Now is the time to prepare. We read in the book of Acts how when they had a prophetic word about a famine coming in the land, the disciples, the people did not just sit back and say, oh, okay, God will handle it when that day comes. They actually sent relief to the people that were going to go through that famine. And so in the same way, God desires us to do practical things to prepare for what's coming. So this is the second part of the video I want to share with you is practically some of the things God showed me to prepare for what's coming. The first and most important thing you can do to prepare for the end times is to get ready spiritually. Do you hear the voice of God? Do you walk in holiness? Do you walk fully surrendered to the Lord? Are you compromised? Jesus said the lukewarm are spit out of his mouth. The Bible says that if you are a friend of the world, you make yourself an enemy of God. The Bible says without holiness, no one will see the Lord and that we can fall short of the grace of God if we're not walking in that. The Bible says that all who are born of God do not sin. They can't, God's seed remains in them. They can't sin. That means if you are really born of God, if you're a child of God, you will not be walking in sin. You will turn from your sin truly. He gives you a new heart when you surrender to him. God does a work in you where you hate sin and love righteousness. And that is the power of God. The Bible is very clear on this point. You can see some of my other videos that talk about that. But continuing on, also prepare yourself mentally. Do you know that the pre-trib rapture is a false doctrine? This was not held by the apostles for sure or the first church. The pre-trib rapture is a modern um, thing that got really popular in the modern age. It was not something that was popular in the first church. Um, the pre-trib rapture is a false doctrine. If you were to take a major test and your teacher said, hey, you are about to take a test and it's coming and you need to prepare because it's worth 90% of your grade. If you fail this test, you fail it all. Then you would study and work hard. But imagine if someone came to you and said, oh, don't listen to the teacher. We don't actually have the test. You're going to not have to take it. Don't worry. And so you don't study and you don't work hard. Then one day when you get into the classroom and the teacher said, I told you, you would have to study for the test. I told you what was coming. And you say, ah, but I listened to these other people that told me I wouldn't have to take the test. What's going to happen to you on that day? You are going to fail the test. And so hear me now. The words of Jesus are that we will go through tribulation. He said we're going to be hated and killed and all these things we're going to have to endure to the end. And it's going to be God's power that will keep us. But you need a relationship with God right now. So prepare yourself spiritually, prepare yourself mentally. Stop thinking you're just going to be raptured out. I'll post a video about that in the description where it shows many, many verses of how clearly the Bible teaches that a pre-trib rapture is not true and that we will be raptured out at the end of the tribulation time period. Now, 
another way to prepare is this one is only for those who God has been putting on your heart. Seek God, ask him if this is something for you that you should be doing because God is going to speak to people differently and he has different things in store for other people. But these are the things God wants me to share with you. If God has been putting this on your heart, then I'm here to confirm it and help you in that. So practically, in a dream I had, the Lord showed me about fishing and foraging. And another time, the Lord showed me when I was in a prayer closet, I was doing a, a fast or a longer fast. And I was seeking God, seeking God, seeking God in the prayer closet. And God spoke to me very, very clearly about how to prepare for the end times, that it wasn't about storing up this kind of thing. He showed me what to store up. And he said, flour and oil. And I didn't understand what that meant because you can't really store up flour. But then he began to teach me and show me, you can't store up flour because it goes bad. But he began to teach me and show me what he meant was grains. Grains that can be made into flour. For example, these are wheat berries. They last for years and years and years. These are organic wheat berries. You can take them or wheat grain. You can take it and sow it in a field and multiply. So instead of buying this that cannot be multiplied, instead of buying that that cannot be multiplied, get organic grains, whether it's wheat, barley, spelt, rye, whether it's dried corn, whatever you can get in your country, whatever you can get in your country, you need to start seeking God about storing up those things because when the market crashes, which the Lord showed me it's going to crash, what are you going to do? How are you going to get food? The Bible talks about a time of great famine that's coming. The Bible talks about a time where one, one quart of wheat is going to be the price of a day's wages. It's going to be extremely hard to get food, to get grain. And I believe that time is coming sooner than we thought. So now is the time God is speaking to you. If he's speaking to you in this, please listen to me and get grains because this is what is sustaining in those end times. Not things like this that are just going to run out and you won't be able to plant it. You won't be able to, you'll eat it and it'll be done. But grains are things where you can plant it and replicate it wherever God sends you in places of hiding, in um, places of refuge and things like that during the tribulation. If you can have a little thing of grains, even you are able to sow that and plant that. Start saving up seeds. You don't actually have to spend a bunch of extra money on this at all. Um, when you have, let's say you get uh, spaghetti squash at the store. It has a whole bunch of seeds in it. All you got to do is dry those seeds and those seeds can be used to plant. Usually that's the case for many of the foods. Um, some are hybrids and different things, but you're able to plant this and, um, and be able to multiply it. So learning how to garden, saving up seeds. If you're eating, let's say, uh, a tomato, you can save those seeds and they can be planted later. That doesn't cost extra money. You were going to get tomatoes anyways. You were going to get a squash anyways, right? So just start saving seeds. When you get a red bell pepper, when you get um, many different things, start saving seeds. Those are things that are going to be helpful for you in the end times is to have a pack of seeds, to have something that you can replicate. But um, back to what the Lord showed me that day is he said flour and oil. He's talking about grains that are stored up. I saw a big silo. Grains. God is going to have places that are set up, places of refuge. He's already put it on many people's hearts, even nearby here. There's a place of refuge that God has set up, and he's speaking to his people about it, where he's going to be able to lead many of his people in the end times to places of refuge. Other people are going to be on the run. Other people are going to be martyred. Other people are going to go through all of these things. But one thing in common is we will not be able to buy and sell. We will not be able to buy and sell. <laughs> so we have got to be more self-sustainable. What are you going to do in those end times? Do you know how to fish? Do you know how to hunt? Do you know how to um, garden? Do you know how to um, preserve food, how to ferment food, how to, how to survive in these end times? And here's the thing. If you do not have those things, God will provide for you supernaturally. The same God that split the rock and poured out water, the same God who provided manna and quail for the people is the same God that we serve and he will provide for us. But one of the ways of providing is telling us beforehand so that we can store up and not in a way of selfish storing up for ourselves, but in a way of being led by the Holy Spirit, not our own mind and not by fear, but being led by the Holy Spirit as he guides us to say, yes, I think the Lord is leading me to do these things, to store up just an extra amount of grain. And if something bad happens, not only will my family be able to eat and have extra food, but also I'll be able to share and help others 
and we'll be able to um, build a sustainable community wherever God sends us. See, God is sending people and he's going to bring people together in community and help many people have a sustainable place where they can actually grow food. Now, as far as the oil goes, many oils go rancid. So I was looking and, and talking to the Lord, not sure what to do, but I believe he showed me one oil is beef tallow. You can go to a butcher or go to um, a different Let's see, go to a butcher, go to a grocery store where they have a whole bunch of extra beef fat lying around. Beef fat has a lot of vitamins in it. I know you've been told it's really, really bad for you, but it actually has a lot of vitamins in it. People have been using it for thousands of years. And it's amazing because it can last in storage for a long time without going bad if it's stored properly. So that's an option. You can get it very, very cheaply. Just get that extra fat that they're throwing away or that they um, are selling for very, very cheap. And you can boil it down and then it's called rendering it. And then you can put it in a sanitized container and um, it'll store for a very long time. So that's an option for you. But the things the Lord showed me specifically was the grains and the oil and the fishing and the foraging. Those are the things. But other things are very important as well. Three years ago, in August 2018, God showed me that I would be used to help God's people prepare for the end times like a Joseph. And I'm not at all saying that's because I'm special. There's many, many people that are used like that in this hour. But it's amazing how three years later, God has said, now is the time. Now is the time to step into that call to help people prepare. And he's confirmed it through um, different dreams and different events and things, things that he's spoken to my heart. So if you'd like to subscribe to the channel as the Lord gives me a dream or a vision or speaks to me about what is coming on the earth and how to prepare, please subscribe to the channel so you can know. God bless you all. Bye-bye.